Now, sometimes you get unlucky and it's just not your fault. And sometimes you miss a super easy shot and why? Because nothing in life is 100%. And some days everything you touch literally turns to gold. I guarantee you, you will beat somebody who you've never expected to beat before. What's going on guys? Coach Steven here with 15 Points of Tennis. And you know, a handful of months back, earlier this year, I was at Easter Bowl, which is national level one tournament, one of the biggest junior tournaments in North America. I was there with you know, some players, and I ended up talking to this one parent who was, was not happy with his daughter. He had, she had been up 5-2 in the second set and completely lost her mind and blew it. He's like, you know, how could this happen? What happened out there? Yada, yada. And look, this doesn't just happen to, I mean, yes, there are a lot of highly competitive players in a small place when you're talking about Easter Bowl. But it, this happens to all of us, both parents and players alike, the ups and downs of tennis. And I was just telling this parent, like, look, you know, when you've been on the roller coaster long enough, the ups and downs just don't seem as bad, a little bit more palatable. And I think he responded something like, you know, will it ever end? You know, when will this ever end? Now, look, the roller coaster of tennis, it can be jarring, it can be brutally and emotionally taxing, okay? But on the flip side, you know, like, again, some people have a bad experience on a roller coaster, some have a good experience. On the flip side, it can be exhilarating and fun. Yes, st still emotionally taxing, yet still a little bumpy, but people have a different experience. And from all the parents and players I've met, people have a very different experience. And most people, it's not the latter, it's the former. And so look, for me at this stage, like, I can watch tennis. You could hook me up, you could hook me up to, you know, my heart, up to monitor, my heart rate won't change. I can stay completely calm and tranquil <laughs> watching a tennis match. And it's not because I'm apathetic. It's not because, oh, I don't really care about the match or the, or the result. A lot of times it's my student playing. Look, and I want my students to crush it. I want my students to, to destroy. I want all you guys watching my stuff to use my stuff to win tennis matches, to, okay, to be better. It's not because I don't care. It's because I understand I understand the process of tennis, and then I understand the underlying variables of tennis, okay, that manifest, manifest themselves into reality, okay, and it's, there's a confluence of variables that's hard to understand sometimes, all right, and that's why I'm not surprised anymore. I'm just not surprised. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about randomness and variability, which is one of the most important to topics I can essentially give to you guys. I spend so much of my time really thinking about this and internalizing it. And everyone thinks they know what, like, randomness and variability just means it follows, you know, tennis follows no patterns. There are all these upsets and ups and downs. Everyone thinks that they know how to deal with it, but from what I've seen, even at the highest level, people don't get it. People don't know how to deal with it. So instead of, you know, all the ups and downs of tennis being this drag upon you, okay, we're going to flip your perspective, and you're going to know, and you're going to learn how to use this to your advantage. Maybe I'll try later again. I don't know. God, it's killing me. Um... So if you watch my video on the multiplier rule, again, that's another one of my super, super central videos. I recommend you go back and watch that to give you more context for this one. But to recap, look, you essentially have a base skill level, okay, you're average. Day-to-day -day you have this average, 
Okay, some days you play above that average, some days you play below that average, and that average baseline skill is dependent on your mental attributes, your physical attributes, it's dependent on your tech on your technique, your base skill set. So your skills, all right, that give you right your baseline essentially. And we're not robots, right? Some days we're feeling amazing, energetic, in a good mood. Right? Some days your technique feels just like it's on point and you're playing great. Some days it's quite the opposite. You're in a bad mood, you had a tough day, you're low energy, etc. So look, this baseline, some days you're playing above, some days you're playing below. I call this day-to-day -day variability. Every day is different, so it's up and down and up and down and up and down. Some days, and it's not, again, it's not constant like this. It looks more like this, right? Up, up and down that average. Up and down, up and down, up and down. It's completely random. Okay, now if you think, that, if you think that's bad, that's just day-to-day -day variability. Next we have something called long-term variability. Okay, short-term and long-term. And long-term variability, I'm talking about, look, we're all going through changes in our game. We're all modifying our game. Sometimes you're playing well for a few weeks. Sometimes you're playing bad. Sometimes your confidence is up. Who knows, the conditions might be right. You might have found a technique that worked against a certain type of, of opponents and then you changed later and then it didn't work. You might have taken a break off. You might have been maintenance or immersion mode. So there's so many things going on. So watch this. There's long-term variability. Oh, you can call it month-to-month -month variability. Now, again, reality is, has a confluence of variables always. When I can, now I'm going to layer short-term variability over long-term variability, and then you get this. So when you, I layer those, those two variability curves on top of each other, it creates variability like you would never even imagine, way up and way down. So you have your average here, way up and way down. And you know what? Look guys, tennis doesn't care. The universe doesn't care how, how hard you worked. It, you could have played five hours a day for the past 10 months. The universe doesn't care. If you play a bad 90 minutes of tennis, you will lose. Okay, you will lose. And so here's what happens. So let's say you have a, a baseline up here. Okay, that's pretty high, right? Your average skill set, your average day. Then your opponent is down here. Well, let's say your, your valley, right? Your valley is, comes down here and your opponent's peak intersect. Your p valley intersects with your opponent's peak. That's called an upset, guys. It happens all the time in tennis. It's an upset. If you peak... At, at the right time your opponent has a valley, you will beat them, and vice versa, okay? It's just who play, whoever produces better tennis that day will win. It might be better tennis for 30 minutes or 90 minutes. Again, whoever produces tennis for you know, the duration of, of the match will indeed win. And so, look, you might say, well, shouldn't a good player, shouldn't a good player not have these ups and down swings? Well. That's never the case. Yes, we'll, actually we'll talk about in another video how to reduce variability, but everyone still has variability, and this is why you don't understand variability. So really pay attention for the next three minutes so you can get this, okay? Random, so when they did a study at UC Berkeley, they had two study groups, okay, group one, group two. Group one, they said, again, this was a study on randomness and the human's inability to understand this. They had group one flip a coin a hundred times, like a coin, like bing, boom, 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 heads, bing, boom, 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 tails. They flip a coin a hundred times, record the results on a sheet of paper. That was group one. Group two, they had that group in their mind come up with, tail, do imaginary coin flips. So tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, and record, write all the results on a sheet of paper. Now, the professor left the room, let the students off to their business to record the results, then the professor came back into the room, and you know what? In about five seconds, literally five seconds, the professor could tell immediately which group had flipped the coin versus which group had came up with the imaginary coin flips in their head. She could tell, and how could she tell? So the group that had flipped, did the imaginary flips, okay, get this, had no more than five consecutive heads or tails in a row. No more than a row of five. So heads, 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 or tails, 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 tails. The group that had actually flipped the real coin 
bing, boom, boom, boom. The group that actually flipped the coin had a consecutive string of seven, either seven heads or seven tails. Now, the thing is, it would have been highly improbable to not have gotten a string of seven heads or seven tails after a hundred coin flips. Okay, but the human mind that just, so, so our human mind is a pattern recognition machine. We look at the path and say, oh, a coin flip must be 50-50. So then the next, if I got four heads, I must have, I must probably get a tails soon. That's not how reality works. The swings of, you know that variability curve that goes up and down like this? That swings of variability are much wider than you think. So how does this relate to tennis, okay? If you play a hundred matches, I guarantee you, you will beat somebody who you've never expected to beat before. And if you don't beat someone you've never expected to beat before, or you never can imagine you could have beat before, that means that's highly improbable. And, and likewise, in those hundred matches, you will lose to someone who you never, and play so bad you won't even recognize yourself. Like, okay, can that's, because in your mind, you expect to play a certain way, you expect to be this player based on all the past results, Randomness and variability, if it doesn't surprise you, something is wrong. Because the human mind can't understand the pattern of variability. Because there is no pattern to variability. Here's the problem with this though. Okay, I know I took you through this long-winded explanation. Here's where it really relates to you. Okay, if you're, as a junior tennis parent, okay, oh, my son is ranked 38 in Northern California. He beat someone ranked 14 in Northern California. Wow, my son must have got so much better. No, unless you changed your, unless you redid your forehand in the last 24 hours or got super buff in the last 24 hours, you're the same player yesterday. You're the same player yesterday that you were today. Maybe just a little bit better, okay, if you're improving your baseline skill set every day. Or if you lose to someone in a big way, you're the same player you were the day before. The exact same. But with variability, again, a parent, oh, my son is ranked 14 and he lost to a 38 ranked player. Oh, my son must have got worse. What are we doing wrong? What's wrong with him? That new coach, how is he screwing my kid up? Absolutely insane. When you start attributing positive or negative, positive or negatives to the wrong thing, you start to create up all these random reasons. You put pain on the situation or you get super elated and, and euphoric because you beat someone but you didn't get better, you're setting your, expectation, your expectations up to get crushed because reality always sets in, okay? If you can become immune, like if you can become immune and understand if you're not surprised something's wrong, like I, some of my students I see play atrocious, atrocious, but I know that's just part of the game because I know I'm gonna also see them at the top of their curve play unbelievable, amazing, and I know that's not them. I'm always looking at their base skill set, base fundamentals, and how on a day-to-day -day basis we can raise the bar for their base skill set. Now sometimes you get unlucky and it's just not your fault. And sometimes you miss a super easy shot and why? Because nothing in life is 100%. And sometimes you're doing your absolute best, but, but you just lose your focus and it makes you want to pull your hair out. And really none of these things are your fault. They just contribute to the day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month variability. And again, even more out of your control, sometimes you play a great point, you're working your opponent, and your opponent just comes up with something a little bit better. And some days everything you touch literally turns to gold. Just remember that you're the same guy and don't get too elated because what goes up, like your emotions, must come down also. Now we're gonna drop the final bomb on you, okay, regarding variability. If you can get this, now, this is the one that, that scares the crap out of me because I was, this kept me down for years, okay, and I see it everywhere. When you really look for this, you, you'll see it everywhere and it's huge, right? This keeps players from improving consistently. Now, get this analogy, right? Now, on one end of the spectrum here, on this side of the spectrum, we have chess. Chess, from what I'm told, chess is a game of very low variability. It doesn't take very many 
times uh, to play someone at chess before you realize that they're better than you. Maybe only like once, right? Before you realize that that person is way better than you. On this side, we have poker, which is a game of super high variability, okay? Now in poker, the good player can play the bad player. They can play each other for years on end. And the bad player will win a lot due to the luck factor or the randomness and chance factor. The bad player will still beat the good player a decent amount of times, okay? now. In the long haul, in the long run, obviously the good player will rake in all the chips. But in the short term, okay, the bad player will have, still have big enough wins and the good player essentially, you know, for the good player who's, who, who for many, many years was working on his skill set to improve and get better, essentially these losses are brutal. It's emotionally taxing to lose to someone who is way worse than you. Okay, now, but that's the thing that keeps it going for the bad player. The bad player, because they can win on occasion, this, this is false reinforcement. Again, that's what keeps the player at the table because the bad player, yeah, because based on what they're doing, again, they just think it's all luck. They just think, oh, I had a good day. It's, there's no skill in here. Because there is a, a, a wide variance, again, it's good, that wide variance, although it's rough for the good player, in the short term, it's good for the good player in the long term who keeps improving his or her skills. And the good player, if the bad player is unaware of their disadvantage, the good player and, and, and just keeps thinking it's luck and doesn't improve, and the good player keeps improving his or her skill set over time, at some point the good player will pull so far away from the bad player and the skill gap will be so big, the bad player, even with luck, variability, chance, randomness, won't be able to, co to compete with a good player. And so look, tennis isn't quite like chess. It's like chess, you know, when you lose to someone, you get instant feedback, okay? You know to go back and work on your skill set. But it isn't quite like poker either. There's not as much variability in, as in poker. So tennis is somewhere in the middle, okay? But this is what ha essentially happens in tennis. You know, I see players going out, okay? And like we talked about that crazy variability, you will have a amazing day right, where you will beat someone who you're better than. And again, that reinforces, look, you could be doing the right things, but you could also be doing the wrong things. But that win will reinforce that the wrong things you've been doing were right. Like, you know, I would, I was like 13, 14 years old. I had no technique. I would go out there and just hit on the ball machine, play every day and play hard. And then maybe one, one tournament, I, everything would work. I put it all together. I beat some of the best players in Northern California. And in my mind, oh, what I'm doing is right. If I can just do that every day, I would be amazing. I would be one of the top players, best players ever. But that's not true because that was false reinforcement. That was just a flash. Okay, that was just the top of the variability. Then my doubt, when I went down on the, the, the valleys of my variability, okay, way, well below my average were so rough and so painful. Okay, but instead of a game like chess where I know that I just need to improve my skill set. In tennis, I didn't. And so, understand this. I'll, I'll, say this. I'll say this multiple times. Variability keeps people down, okay? Because, especially a game like tennis. So if I, if I told you tic-tac-toe, tic-tac-toe is a very simple game. You can master tic-tac-toe in about 60 seconds. Okay, you'll figure the whole game out. But tennis, there's so many variables. Tennis is so complicated. There's so many variables in tennis. You can be even doing the right things in tennis and still lose. Does that make sense? Okay, you can do the, again, you can do the right things in tennis. Like remember Roger Federer lost to John Millman? Who's the better player? Well, that day Federer lost at the US Open to John Millman. And that day John Millman was reinforced that, okay, maybe his bad technique or your clunky footwork beat Federer. He just needs to run more. He just needs to do more fitness and work hard. But that's not true. So it, th it throws you off from the path. So as a player, look, variability keeps you down if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, you can be learning bad things from a coach and still be winning for a short amount of time. Again, but like the good poker player and the bad poker player, the good players will rake in the chips in the long run. Okay, because the skill gap will get so big. And so how do you know if you're learning the right skills or the wrong skills in tennis? Because it's very hard. It's very hard to figure this out. Well, 
Focus on the long-term in tennis. Focus on, and I, I implore you to see in tennis to seek truth, okay? S again, it, everything should work in science. Everything should be, accord be in alignment with body mechanics, okay? Seek the truth, learn the fundamentals. Even if you're having a bad day, a bad month, don't let the variability throw you off. Don't let it derail you, okay? Keep driving, and, and again, keep that long-term vision in mind. Where does your tennis need to be in one year, three years, five years? Then you won't be thrown off from variability, I guarantee it, okay? This is one of the biggest things. It hits people at every level, the local junior level, okay, the, the national junior level. I even see college players fall into this trap because they've been doing something for so long, it's, it, it's the wrong thing to do, but they just have a couple good days, but it, in their mind they're reinforced in the wrong way. They keep doing that, they, they're locked into that for the rest of their lives, okay? Obviously it's hard work to change, but again, if you want to be a great player, and again, if you want to be more, more immune to the nasty ups and downs of tennis and all the emotional swings, okay, understand this concept, understand variability. I guarantee you everything will be okay in the long haul, okay? Just focus on the truth. Continue to learn, keep improving your game every single day, all right? And how variability works, hopefully someday, you're, you're hoping that, you know, Six months from now, your average day will be equivalent to your best day from now. Again, because you're moving that baseline skill set up every single day, all right? So thank you so much. You might have to rewatch this video again because I, because a little convoluted. I threw a lot in for this video, but I really wanted you to get this. This is a complicated subject that's not explained very often. Okay, you might rewatch this video if you didn't get it. It's really important. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.